So, hey and welcome to this somewhat simple uh, analysis of Entra. The headline is Debt in Cycles. So, what is Entra? Entra is a real estate company. Uh, it is normally renting out a lot of offices, like it's kind of their thing. And they also have a lot of tenants from the public sector. So that is some of the key points that you should be aware of when it comes to Entra. They are also kind of a branch that comes from Stosbyg, which is a governmental company. Basically, the commercial buildings that this government company was, was moved out. Their generally business strategy is to be leading on customer experience quality. And also, they are more or less trying to be leading with their ESG in the real estate segment they are. And they also want to try to deliver valuable growth. Most of their portfolio is in Oslo. So there you have what entries. So what are the benefits of Entra? Well, Entra is cyclical. This can give you a good entrance to the share if you think that they will do good. It also provides some risk, of course, but like it is uh, nice in that way. You, you have up and down turns in this segment quite easily. They do provide quite decent dividends. It's from 2.5 to 5% dividends normally. Uh, at least you have the possibility to get that. And right now uh, it is at close to 5%, but the dividend for next year is kind of at risk. They do have a lot of public tenants and their ESG focus means that they might come a little bit easier out of the EU directive that was revisited Q4 last year, which will possibly create a little bit of pressure on real estate companies to improve their energy consumption. They do have a fairly decent rental income growth, like stable, nice growth, basically. So what is the negative side of Entra? Well, the dividend risk. They do have low debt control, like an interest coverage ratio at 2.3. Um, this literally do eat into their cash flow and put their dividend risk. They do also have a loan to, uh, to value at 52%. And this is also not a good thing for a company to have. Like they early, like uh, early 22 or in 2021 in a yearly report, their loan to value was actually 38%. So this is an enormous increase in just a few quarters. And it literally means that their evaluation uh, of assets, like their portfolio of buildings have fallen in value. Like you can see this, if you look at quarter one to three, you can see the buildings falling in value as the interest rate goes up. And will this have any anything to say on their current debts what is the expectations from the debtors like the people that are borrowing this to this company so this might create some issues in the short term or midterm the value of the stock have also fallen and also the portfolio wall, uh, value is falling when it comes to the simple key ratio, I already mentioned the interest coverage ratio. One thing I didn't mention, though, is from all the companies that I have checked in the Scandinavian market, real estate, of course, they're one of the worst in the game. And since Entra is kind of well known to pay out dividend, it will chew in. Vault 6.1, again, not the best in the business, but Entra have been there for a while. It's normal that they don't have vaults at 10 years post then. So um, it indicates that you should have several more years safely knowing that you will get your cash flow. The yield is increasing, 4.24. This is not re really or necessarily a good thing uh, since the yield is increasing when the portfolio is falling down in value or going closer to what they perhaps bought it for. Sometimes if you initially buy the building, higher yield is better. But when you have had the building, higher yield indicates that the building's value is lowering. So that is something that you need to take into account with uh, Entra. Their debt per equity is, well, they have weakened. Uh, normally they started in 1.7 in 2014 and it went down to one. In 2022 now though, it has gone back to 1.4 and it's not really the best timing due to well, the interest changes and those kind of things. Their price to earnings is uh, normally above 15. I think uh, most of the numbers that I've added up showed their price per earning at 20. It might be that they have reached high points in their evaluation at those numbers, but they're not the cheapest stock to get, at least for the risk or business segment that they're currently in, or at least from what you're experiencing right now. And their net asset value is 150. You need to be a little bit wary about this as well. Like it indicates that the stock is cheap due to the Norwegian price right now is 100. The net asset value is currently falling. So if you buy it for 100 now, it might not be so cheap in the next three, four, to six months. So just uh, think a little bit about that one. When it comes to 22 for Entra, well, they have had a downturn of 48%. So they were around 200 knock. 
now they're around 100 knock. They have struggled with their debt control and they have had like this huge evaluation fall also in their asset value or portfolio. Uh, they have almost doubled their interest bearing debt and they made this huge investment. Like this was actually in 21, but like the debt was taken in 22. And they made this huge investment in uh, Q4, 22, basically at the end of the year. For Oslo Areal, it was 13.55 billion knock and all of it was debt. All of the investment was uh, made by debt. Those numbers, what they expected to earn from Oslo Areal, must have changed. So their economy, like rental income growth is, as you can see, fairly stable. You can see it's like from 2014 to 2021. It's a decent growth here. It's like not like the best in the business or anything, but like you kind of like know what you can get. The question though, is it okay based on the amount of debt they're taking? And their fair, fair value increases is quite extreme. So basically I've highlighted a few years here to 17, 18, 20 and 21. They're close to 10% fair value increases. And uh, you can see in 2022, the fair value have currently fallen. It's something to take notice of because like this shows good in the statement. It will show good in uh, the price earnings, uh, but it's not actual real earnings. It's not realized value. So um, yeah, it's, it's just something to think about at least when the interest is going up. When it comes to the taxes, these are not taxes that will be written off or needed to be paid. Like since it's not realized value, it just looks ugly. Debt and debt handling. Well, they have increased their debt. You can see here, like this is uh, interest bearing and this one here is total liabilities. Total liabilities is currently uh, higher than equity. It's like the 1.4, right? And look at this change from 21 to 22. For me, this one is rough. Like this is the um, Real purchase, but yeah, this is so much of their uh, debt that is going into just one portfolio, one building. So yeah, I'm, I'm not too big of a fan of that. They have hedged about 50% of the debt. Um, that is nice and interesting to see. It provides some safety in this dark market. And from what I've understood, they have worked quite hard to um, improve their hedges. Current maturity time is 2.7 years, but they still have one of the worst interest covered ratios in Scandinavia. So I don't know if it really helps and um, this finance policy will this indicate where the issues will start here for example where the banks will start reacting uh, and here a loan to value below 50 percent while well, you're already uh, above so you're breaking your own finance uh, policy it's something to uh, notice uh, i would say that they are in a vulnerable position and higher interest can create issues for enter as it is right now so with the cash flow I think here we have some more good things to say. So you can see the cash flow have more than doubled since 2014, and it has almost doubled from just Q1 to Q3 here from 2014. So they have had a good cash flow increase. This is rental income, right? And they have been able to keep up good dividend. And one other thing you can take notice of is that the dividend is always paid one year after in Norway. It's not like they're paying out everything in dividend from 2014. So it might look uglier than it actually is, though it is used in that period but in general like here is where you see the dividend for that exact year so it's not as bad as it looks other than that it's like you can see that they have taken up uh, borrowing every single year except for 2017 and this is also the year where they basically didn't invest any in too much uh, investment is based on both divestment and investments while the borrowing is only interest bearing and here you can see the interest that i've taken out and how it looks currently now right now it is a huge part of their cash flow right and so it's just things to be wary about and you can kind of like see the you know, like reaction here right it's like 2021 5005 2022 13006 is like did and I feel like okay we have taken enough time it looks like the interest isn't going up we can start taking risks now it might look like it and it was really not the best timing or they got quite unlucky from what happened so uh, the weather reports cold and windy you have lower evaluation right the asset value have fallen and it might continue to fall it looks like it can it looks like they can also experience a downgraded rating from moody from 1baa to 2baa this means that basically good chance to paying down debt to acceptable chance to paying down debt will this impact their possible interest margins the how easy it is to get liquidity for them will the banks be as willing to take a risk on a company that have a lower rating these are questions that will happen 
and the alone to value is quite high. So possible scenarios is divestment and emission. Divestment is more likely. Like, of course, I hope that none of those are needed. Divesting literally means that they have mismanaged, right? And the same will uh, emission be like they need to save them, uh, save the company by taking money from the shareholders by, hey, we did a bad job, took too much risk. But it is kind of like the cold and windy part about them here right now. If the interest doesn't go up, it might be possible. Uh, if the evaluation doesn't continue to fall, it's at least a lot less risky for Entra to continue without doing anything. But like this will be interesting in the future. Where's Entra going forward? Well, it is going to be difficult both short and medium term. Uh, at least unless the interest is starting to go down. For now, the public rentals are safe uh, for a few more years. So in Norway, we are building something called Regeringskvartala, like this is a governmental quarter, like it's an um, area for a lot of the governmental workers to be at. And it is starting to get ready or going to start being ready in um, two years and forward. Of course, this is a governmental project, so it might take a little bit longer. You know how the government is working. And it is expected that several of the wealthy real estate companies will move their public, like lose some of their public tenants to go there. Uh, another question that is very relevant for Entra, I would say, is, is the same office market actually needed? Right now, I'm normally working from home. I don't need to go to the office. Well, no one does. COVID changed things. And is it really needed for all the companies to have such big offices that can actually handle all of their employees every day when, well, what, 10% of them are meeting at the office? So this is a risk part in Entra and probably will depend on what laws are going to say if it's actually needed that they have all the offices or not. Like for uh, legislation, should I as an employee have an office or have a desktop at, uh, desk at my work? Is this something that I need to have or can they tell me that I need to work at home? Um, when it comes to the dividend, it is at high risk going down. Like they are currently fighting debt and the interest coverage ratio is literally eating into the cash flow and making it more difficult for the dividend to be paid. And other than that, I think the projects will experience issues due to the slowdown in the economy where costs will increase. The initial project estimates will be wrong due to the increased interest, due to the increased cost of production, like building things, and also just the fee for uh, the employers. Like it's, it's, things are just more expensive now. And for Entra, I would say like the interest is key. If you think the interest will go down, Entra is a good company to buy. Like they have fallen a lot and they're very sensitive to the interest. But if you think the interest will continue up or stay as it is, it might not be a good time to go into Entra. So this is where you as an investor may need to take like the choice. Where is the interest in one year? Where will the interest be in two? It's difficult to say. Uh, other than that, here you can see their diversification. Here you can see that uh, they have a lot in Oslo. So 72% in Oslo, 4% in Drammen, and 6% uh, in Sandvika. Like basically that is also Oslo. And then you have Trondheim and Bergen and also Stavanger. They're mostly invested towards Oslo, which historically have been a safe place. O Oslo is normally one of the more expensive places to be. It is popular to go for Norwegians. It might be a good choice, right? But uh, we will see how uh, the value of uh, properties in uh, Oslo will change over time. So can they do it? Like right now, I'm not really talking about Entra. I'm talking about Castellum and Balder. Castellum and Balder started a small war buying up Entra. You can see they currently are top 20 uh, shareholders. They literally have 70% of their shares. Are they in a position to continue to buying up Entra? That is the biggest upside risk or downside risk there is on this company. If they are, they can push up the prices and get quite a lot. They were willing to pay 180 knock for the uh, stocks before. So this is the biggest upside risk you have. Downside risk them is they're both having over 50% loan to value as well. Castellum's biggest shareholder was like... Um, I don't really want us to pay dividend anymore. Can we stop doing that? You don't have the economy for that. So not a healthy sign for a stock. When it comes to the Balder, I don't think that they actually do pay dividend. So they might be in a better situation. But in their Swedish stocks, they should have a fairly high loan. Uh, a lot of the real estates in Sweden do. Other than that, disclaimer, this is not financial advice for anyone to buy or sell Entra. This is, though, a simple analysis of a Norwegian company to help with insight. Some of the main resources I've used is a podcast from uh, Economini Hetna, which is Hegnar, a financial newspaper in Norway. I've also looked through several uh, DNB analytics and uh, Nordic Real Estate Weekly, which I found really interesting, actually. And other than that, Entra quarterly reports, presentations, and yearly reports. Hope this helps. Have a nice day. Cheers.